Hello, welcome back to Across the Park podcast. A bit of a special bonus show before a huge, huge game tomorrow. Everton versus Burnley. If you live under a rock or you haven't got a phone that's got X or Twitter, then this is the show for you. We're going to tell you all about what's going to be going on tomorrow. Pete from the 1878 or the 1878 is here. Uh, Pete, first of all, welcome to Across the Park. Thanks for coming on. How are you? Oh, yeah, I'm great, Ian. Really looking forward to tomorrow as much as... Uh... Filled with a little bit of trepidation given the you know the circumstances and the position we're in, but I feel like you know tomorrow could be the start of of us getting ourselves out of this mess. Um, I think it's so it's so important and so vital that the that the crowd are up for it tomorrow, um, and that's certainly what we're we're trying to help with. I feel it's almost got to start tomorrow. I, I think there's nowhere else for it to start really because you, you look at the fixtures and and the fixtures. In in some places look winnable and they look look okay. In other places they look like Everton will probably drop points. So for me, it's got to start <laughs> tomorrow. And it feels a little bit like remember Leeds a couple of years ago where where, where the eighteen seventy eight new guys said, "Come on, we need to do more." It feels a little bit like that now because although there's been um, that that season, especially the end of that season twenty two twenty three, you guys were unbelievable in what you did. I felt last season with the Newcastle one, I felt fans felt a little bit tired. I feel now we've got this back where we now know tomorrow's huge. Before we do talk about tomorrow, Peter, I just want to say for me as a blue, and I don't talk for every Evertonian, I just want to say thanks to what you guys are doing. Um, quite quick, first and foremost, you're supporting time in Everton where people like me and others aren't. And, and that's not saying anyone's a better fan than what I, anyone else. I just want to say thank you for what you're doing. It's really appreciated from me and my lads who go the match with. Look, I think the points deduction was just a turning point in, in everything. Fans came together, whether it be donations to the GoFundMe, whether it be standing outside the windows, though, handing leaflets out, whether it just be getting together. Were you and the group taken back, surprised, Shocked, or were you not shocked by how much Evertonians came together during that period? I think I think that's the thing about Evertonians is that when when our backs are against the wall, I think that's when you see the best of us. Um, I was actually pretty late to the party in terms of the eighteen seventy eight, so I actually joined the group. I was asked to join around the time of the of of the um, the protest against the Premier League. So I was one of the people handing out the handing out the flyers and 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 sort of helping with that. So it's been a, a real eye opener for me, even over the last few weeks or the last month or so. Looking at the the amounts of efforts and and time that goes into into organising this type of thing, and like you've just rightly said, no one no one is a any bigger Evertonian than anyone else. There's no there's no attitude like that, you know, yeah. within within the the volunteers. Um, you know, certainly everyone who who I've who I've spoken to and who have who have been sort of trying to help. Um, they've all been incredible, all massive Evertonians, and just want the best for the club. And I think that goes for every Evertonian. Uh, I think, you know, in terms of the importance of, of us coming together um it, it's the only thing we can do really isn't it let's be honest yeah. i mean we don't we don't have any any kind of say on what happens in in the boardroom we don't have any say on what happens in the premier league in in, in psr hearings we we don't have any say in the starting 11 or the sub or when the substitutes are made um we don't have any say in refereeing decisions the one thing we do have a say in is how we respond as evertonians and and what we can offer and and the job that we can do um, and, and as I say, I'm not saying that, you know, this isn't this isn't us saying, demanding that everyone does something. I just think mm. that, you know, it, it's a case of this is what we believe will help the team. Um, as I say, the one thing we do have control over is how we respond as fans and how we approach games like tomorrow and every single home game from now till the end of the season. And we can really make a difference as a, as a, as a collective. And I don't mean the eighteen seventy eight. I mean Evertonians as a collective. If yeah. we get together, we've proven that we can have an, an incredible atmosphere at Goodison Park, and we we know it can help the players. We know it can it can go the other way. We know that the players can be intimidated by it sometimes. But I think we we all need to come together now and and just try our best to try and get this football club um, you know over the line, get the players over the line, and ensure that we're still in the Premier League next season. Yeah, I think you're spot on. I think it is, it is time that, that a lot of us, me included, do join in, whether it's the marches, whether it's getting in early, abandoning your paint and just getting behind the lads on, on Saturday. Look, Sean Dyke just came out in the press conference this week. He spoke to Joe Thomas, Liverpool Echo, and, and a quote that Sean Dyke said is he said that, yes, sometimes the players and the team have to give it first, but if these fans are going to give it first, then that can help 
on the back of that comment, how important is it to Saturday that we do give it first? I think it sets the tone, doesn't it? From 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 the off, I think if we if we get in early and everyone's up for it and and everyone is is in that mentality and and that sort of siege mentality, the the good it, it, it genuine. We all know it. We've all we've all experienced it. We've all been in it before. And apart from anything else, it's enjoyable, isn't it? When we're yeah. all when we're all fighting, we're all we're all singing. We're, we're shouting for every ball. We're screaming for every foul. Um, I, I often say as well. I mean, it is. It can be very reactionary, Goodison. Um, you know, there's no falseness about it. We don't. There's no sort of. Um, you, you know, you don't just stick a <laughs> stick something on on the tannoy and everyone sings along. It, there's mm. something um, very natural about Goodison Park, and sometimes it does just take one big tackle or one decision to go against you, and, and the crowd will rise. I feel like it, you know, tomorrow from tomorrow, I think it's important for us to go in with the right mentality and the right mindset of. You know we're going to back the players from the first minute till the last, and we're going to we're going to because the other thing about it as well, as in, as great as it is for our players in terms of feeling that support and and feeling the energy from the crowd, it's also intimidating for the opposition. And we want them to feel, we want them to feel intimidated. We don't want it, we we want them to feel to feel like all forty thousand of us or thirty eight thousand of us are right on their backs, and and any mistakes going to be pounced upon. Any 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 heavy touch, we're going to be on them. Um, and as I say, that goes for the players on the pitch, but also the fans in the stands. And um, yeah, I think Sean Dice absolutely spot on with what he said. I mean, I've, I'm in a pretty privileged position where I, I get to speak to a lot of the women's team, mm. and I've sort of spoken to the players directly. As have have you? Have you? I've, mm. uh, I've seen some of your content as well, um, and having spoken to them, I, I know how much it means to those players and how supported they feel. And how important it is to feel that back and, and it can it's, it's like an old cliche isn't it it makes them run an extra yard it makes them that little bit yard quicker of course yeah, yeah it does it genuinely does just just it just gives them all a lift and i i just think if we can get it right tomorrow and and have that moving forward it can make a huge difference um and hopefully you know both supporters can come together and, and help to keep us in the premier league as i said we did our podcast this week and, and we we didn't mean to, but we, we put pressure on by saying it's a must win. So um, I, I'm going to stick with it. I do think Peter is a must win. But anyone, like I said, at the start of the show, if, you, if you're not on X or Twitter or, or, or you're not really on the internet and maybe someone's showing you this, whether it be a family member, what are you asking tomorrow? What What is the plans tomorrow? Because I know there's a march. It's getting early. There's banners. Can you break down what's happening tomorrow? Yeah, so there's going to be a march um, from County Road, I believe, starting at quarter past two, two o'clock, quarter past two, um, which will be marching up to the ground. We're trying to encourage everyone to get into Goodison um, for quarter to three at the latest, so we can so we can sort of set the tone a bit. Um, there's been a lot of planning gone into this. Katie and Gemma, in particular, who've um, who've had <laughs> boxes of flags and and, yeah. and and flagpoles in their house for for a number of weeks. Um, boss people, so by got, the way, then boss people, yeah, Katie and Gemma, yeah, are oh, brilliant. Honestly, the amount of work they've done is is incredible, and, and hopefully everyone can see that tomorrow and and appreciate it because you know we've got to I've got to give massive massive praise to them too because I mean we've been going around to their house to 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 learn how to use these flags and <laughs> and put the flagpoles together and all kinds of things. That you do, like, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. It's, it's it's been it's been back and forward with designs and and sort of ideas from from numerous people in the group. Uh, and as I say, just down, literally down to, um, you know, being taught how to how to how to wave these flags for health and safety and things. We had to go to Goodison to go through it with the with the you know the, the stadium safety officers and all kinds. So it, you know, there has been a lot of, a lot gone into this to try and to try and build the atmosphere up leading up to kickoff. So there'll be um there'll be a good display in the Gladys Street. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping it'll it'll bring a lot of a lot of vibrancy. There's gonna be a number of flags as well which are going to be left on seats for people. Um I think we've got about three hundred flags of the five foot flags which which are going to be sort of in place uh, for when you get into the lower Gladys Street. If people can leave them behind after the game as well, please, because uh, we want to we want to reuse them uh, for the Forest game and other games going forward. So if you if you do get one of those flags, if you if you can use it, but then if you leave it next to your seat uh, at the end, that'd be great because I'm going to go around and collect them all. Um, but yeah, we've got big this big flag displays. Uh, obviously, the, the usual with with some flags. Um, being draped down from the top, uh, top uh, upper Gladys. Sorry, um, can you can you give us a sneak a sneak peek, Peter, on, on what these flags look like? I know you probably want an el- the element of surprise, and everyone who walks into Goodison who faces the Gladys Street want to have that element of surprise. Can you give us an exclusive? What are the flags looking like? Are these are these special? Are they historic? Yeah, there's there's a there's varying 
varying little nods is what I'll say for all the different flags. We've got we've got different types of flags. So there's the there's the giant ones if you like on the on the long fishing poles, which I was talking about then. Um and then we've got some on on the two poles like the old, you know, the old style ones that we used yeah. to see at the the cup finals and um, they are big and it's going to be windy tomorrow so <laughs> just open open them um, open uh, people are strapped in so we can make sure they don't go flying into the park and um but yeah it's it, it's going to look i think it's going to look great and as i say there's going to be a good few nods to our history in there as well through different designs so it'll be a bit of a where's wally uh to try and pick some <laughs> out and there's also going to be some more as well uh, going forward which uh which are on order, which which will be coming in in time for the Nottingham Forest game and big plans for Forest as well for the park end. I can't wait to see it because there's that famous picture, I think it's before the Brentford game at the end of 23, where the Gladstreet just caked and banners and the sun's on it and it looks looks great. So I can't wait to see it tomorrow. We've talked the flags. Let's break down the other two things quickly. The march to the ground, quarter past two county roads, what, 15, 20 minute walk, singing songs we've seen it before there's that famous one at the arsenal game wasn't there where there's more of a protest and spell all lane looked like they were queuing to get to glastonbury and there was thousands of evertonians passionate and singing how important is that tomorrow to get 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 the atmosphere going a quarter past two outside the grounds i think it's just a, it's just a starting point isn't it um i think it's just to try and get people in the mood and get people together as as, as one unit if you like um <clears throat> to get people ready to go in go into goodison and, and, and sing their hearts out and, and give everything for, for the for the club um we've all seen the scenes over the years certainly over the last few years when when we've been in dire straits and we've really needed the you know the players have needed our support we've we've done the coach greetings and things like that with all the blue flares mm. and it's looked amazing and visually it looks great but also as a, as a fan it, it got me up for it. It got me absolutely, ready, ready absolutely. Going. And um, you know, and at the end of the day, that's that's what it's all about. Just trying to get people in 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 the right in that sort of mind frame of um of going into war, if you like, because that's what that's what this is. Um, again, it's it's not for everyone, and I, and I've got to reiterate this as well. Absolutely, no one's saying that that anyone in this group or or any other group speaks for any Evertonian. No one does. No one speaks that's for true. everyone. Um. It's just an option. It's something, it's something there for people. We, we'd like to encourage people to do these things. Um, obviously, we understand that it's not for everyone, uh, that, and that's that's fair enough. And there's no, you know, there's no animosity towards anyone who might not agree with it. But um, just want everyone to know that we are just trying. We're trying our best to try and try and give give us and the players a little bit of a boost, and hopefully, um, it can translate into a really good atmosphere. I think what you said there is really key that that it's not for everyone. But what I'd say, and, and I'm not I'm not part of the 1817s, but what I would say is people like me who don't do these things often, I'm doing it tomorrow. I'm gonna to take my little boy on my shoulders, he's looking forward to it. And sometimes there are exceptions to the rule. Would we do this? Would Pete do this every home game without speaking for you? Probably not. Would I? No, would everybody? Probably not. But there's moments in time where the football club need the supporters, and I think tomorrow's a big one. And I'll be down there. And then finally, Pete, the, the two forty five in the grounds. To be noisy, you want those players, not just the Everton players, you want the Burnley players to be in that tunnel waiting for the siren, intimidated to hear the noise, the Everton players motivated to get out there. It's important to get in there early and make it noisy inside the ground as well. It is, yeah, it is. And and like you say, in terms of you know that intimidation factor, um, you know, we've all seen footage over the years of of, of how tight that Goodison tunnel is, you know, the, the tunnel where the players walk out and the sound really does reverberate round that tunnel. They can yeah. hear it, they can feel it before they go out, before they hear that sign, before they hear Z cars. If they hear a, a crowd who are, who are up for, for, for a fight, I think it will intimidate them and I think it will inspire our players as well. Um, I think it's important that the players know that we've got their backs, uh, that they're not that they're the ones going out there with confidence and they're the ones who are, who know that we're back, they've got our backing. Um, and it's important that the Burnley players feel the pressure and that they know that they're going into a bear pit. Uh, so, but, so I think that's why we want to try and get it, you, you know, get in a little bit earlier than some, sometimes people would, uh, get to your seats for, for quarter three. Um, and we'll we'll start getting the flags up and we'll start trying to trying to build up to, to kick off. Over on Twitter, it's it's the 1878s with, with no apostrophe, no hyphen, just 1878 with an S at the end of it. And I imagine, Pete, um, before the Forest, before the Sheffield United, Brentford, Liverpool, There'll be more comms over there and what you're doing for those games as well, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. As I say, this is this is kind of the, the, you know the final running now, isn't it? This is yeah. these are the important games. These are the games that I think we I think it's fair to say a lot of us sort of, you know would have looked at these fixtures and thought these are the games <laughs> that we've got to win. 
um, and certainly with the other things hanging over us at the moment as well, a bit of uncertainty in terms of how many points we'll, we're actually on even at the moment. Um, I think it's so important that we that we take these home games um, and take them by the scruff of the neck, to be honest with you, both on and off the, off the pitch. So this should be a warm-up for what's to come. Um, and I think, as I say, the most important thing is that we get behind the players and hopefully we can get those three points tomorrow. Pete, it's been great to have you on. I enjoy your stuff on the Blue Room. I enjoy your singing at every woman's game. You can just hear <laughs> you getting right behind him. Anyone who's not been to Bolton Hall Park, you, you can hear Pete before you can see him. He's one of the best best supporters around. It's been great to get you on. 2.15 tomorrow, County Roads will march into the grounds. Quarter to three, we're in there, we're singing. If you're in the street ends, hold those banners up, help with the flags, leave them behind at the end of the game. Pete, I'm going to let you sign us off. How important is tomorrow for the fans and players to be aligned and get those three points? It's massive. It's huge. Um, it, it's as I say, this is like the end game. Now we we've got um we we've only got so many games left at Goodison Park as well. We want to make the most of it, but certainly this season we've got five massive home games um, starting tomorrow, and we and we need to make the most of them. Uh, we need to get behind the players from the first minute till the last, um, and we need to make Goodison that bear pit that we all know and love, and also enjoy it. Enjoy Goodison while we still got it. Go there, make the noise, make some new memories. Um, and hopefully, as I say, we, we come home with all three points. Couldn't have said it better myself. It's like you're a professional. It's like you're working this full time. It's been great to have you on, Pete. I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks for joining Across the Park podcast. Thanks a lot, Ian. Thanks a lot. Guys, please like, share and subscribe. Put this video in every WhatsApp Everton group that you're in. It's time to get behind the boys tomorrow. Quarter past two, County Roads. Thank you to the 1878. We will see you all there up the toffees.